What's up, Hyperfast Agent? On this episode of the show, we've got a special guest. He has sold over 2,500 homes, runs a very successful real estate team in Utah, and helps investors buy in a lot of other areas as well. He's the host of the Jimmy Rex Show and has written a best-selling book called You End Up Where You're Heading. Welcome to the show, Jimmy Rex. Welcome to the show today, Jimmy. How are you doing? Dude, life's good, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, how's how's the weather out in uh, Utah? Is it Utah's a, nice a great place summer? because during the summer, we get over 100 degrees. We actually had our first 100 degree day already here this summer. And so, and then in the winter, you get winter months. And so we get a little bit of everything. Nice. Uh, before we jump into talking about real estate and all the cool things you're doing, you want to give folks a quick bio and just a little bit about who you are and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I've been a real estate agent since 2005, sold about 3,000 properties myself. My partner sold 5,000 uh, properties to investors. And so been a top producing agent for the last 16, 17 years. And um, I just love all things real estate, man. I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Next Wave of Influence in Real Estate. And then I had a second book come out um, that's just kind of for the general everybody called You End Up Where You're Heading, The Hidden Danger of Living a Safe Life. And uh, all about how to kind of be the hero of your own story and make sure that your life is uh, authentically yours and that you uh, live it to the fullest. And so that's kind of what I do. I love to uh, do all sorts of things that are uh, fun, adventurous, and uh, supposed to be scary. And um, just love you know, people, I picked a good career being a real estate agent because I love to be around people and connect and, and do stuff like that. Yeah, no matter what part of, you know, you're doing in real estate, there's a hundred different ways to do it. You, you got to you gotta connect with people somehow, some way, if, if, you <laughs> yep. wanna, if you wanna scale and do it big. And certainly if you wanna sell thousands of home like, like you've done, what what's your team structured like? You know, how, how many people does it take to, to sell yeah, the homes so that you guys sell? So we're actually, it's kind of interesting. We're pretty small. I, I consider us a ninja team. So it's me. And then I've got, um, I call him a business partner. He used to be my assistant. Now he kind of, he runs my team, but he also does a lot of like showings and things for me. So kind of like an extension of me. And then I have two agents um, that sell. And then one of those agents does all of our investment property deals. And he has his own team of five assistants that help him. So we're really three, four agents, but then a lot of admin help as well. What do you, what do you guys do with investment properties? What, kind of uh, so what we that? do is, yeah, I mean, we basically, we do it a little bit different than an average agent or normal agent. So what we did, what we realized is instead of trying to just find investment investors and investment properties, we wanted to make it more of uh, like we're advisors for our investors. And so what we do is every six months, we have all of our investors, we either do it on the phone or we do it in person if we can, but we have an investor meeting with them, a strategy session, and we'll look at their portfolio, where they're at, what they're buying, what they need to do next. And we treat it like we're financial advisors, but through real estate. And so we sit down with every single one of these people, we look at which assets are performing, which ones are not, which homes maybe we need to sell to buy other ones. And it's been really cool because we have, I mean, we've sold just in the last year, probably three different or 300 different investors a real estate property. And, you know, each one of them, we have these strategy sessions, they just consider us their real estate advisor. And so instead of fighting for business all the time, we just stay in touch, we help them, we walk them through, we do all the pro formas, we really make sure that it's all dialed in. So they know what they're doing for the next five or seven years. And that's how we've really been able to scale this thing. And then, you know, from there, it's just, you know, being able to find enough great properties. And that's where the team comes in. And we work with a lot of teams and other states and other areas as well to help us find that inventory but that's what we've done to set ourselves apart and it's working uh, extremely well how did you go out and and become the group the people the team whatever that is known for you know helping investors how did, investors how, yeah yeah how did that happen 
So my real estate partner, Tyler, he's one of the agents I said is on my team. He does, uh, the one that works with the investors, he used to work for a company that they would do a lot of seminars and coaching and stuff like that. And so they had all these investors they would work with. So he learned a lot of things doing that. And so when we, he came onto my team about three years ago, four years ago, we just started doing a lot of uh, speaking. We started doing a lot of uh, investor seminars. And we just started growing our list and then it just grows like crazy. We got in, you know, we've flown to California, Florida, New York, New Jersey, different areas to speak to large enough groups. Um, I just got back from doing one in Dallas. Um, I'll come, you know, I'll get invited to come speak about real estate. And so uh, anytime we get a chance, we, you know, we've really become experts on how to invest in real estate, what to look for, how to do this the right way. So because of that, everybody loves to work with us. They love to refer people to us, but we just, you know, started small. I mean, the first year we were doing it, we probably sold 30, then we sold 50. And now we have hundreds of investors waiting. We just got to find the inventory, but we, yeah. What are to- they, what are they typically buying? Is it all near, near you in Salt Lake or are you helping no, them all over? Uh, we, were, we were doing a lot in Utah. Now Utah got a little bit harder, obviously. Um, we do a lot of vacation rentals in Utah. Now those work out really well. Still the numbers make a lot of sense. Like I had a development come up in January. Um, some videos kind of went viral. I sold 31 homes to 28 different people in one day, um, <laughs> condos in Park City. And so, wow. yeah, that was a good day. Um, but you know what I did is I've got these people now that trust me that they they were just waiting for the right property. And so when I found one that made sense, I just blasted it out on my Instagram and ended up having over 400 people contact me that day. And yeah, I mean I spent wow. the whole day writing <laughs> contracts. It was funny because we have a new assistant, uh, this girl Jazz, and uh, her it was her first day, and so she's like, "Wow, this is a really cool job you guys have." She just <laughs> thought was, she thought that was normal to make a half a million bucks in one day and sell you know thirty plus homes. But um, so anyway, so that's kind of what we've been able to do. We just so in Utah we do a lot of those um, vacation rental, especially. But then outside of Utah, we work in five or six different markets. We basically had our team went and looked at over 90 markets across the country. We said, where's the best cash flow? Where's the best macroeconomics? Are people moving to there, away from there? Is the economy looking good there? Is it a red state, which matters right now for investment properties? Um, You know, what are the trends? And after looking at all the different areas, we identified four or five cities um, that just really stood out. So we find our typical house is three years or newer. Um, You know, typically we're buying a three bedroom, 2000 square foot house. Uh, two hundred twenty thousand dollars rents for fifteen hundred a month, somewhere in that ballpark. Nice three four hundred dollar a month cash flow. Um, so yeah, just very conservative, uh, very entry level uh, homes that are where we put nice families in them. They have yards, they have garages. Uh, that's and they're very- and they're new, right? Or kind of new. They've yeah, we always say fifteen big, years. Or big newer builder is- built them typically. Yep, yeah, our fifteen years or newer is kind of our philosophy. But you know, a lot of these are even three four years or newer what what's are you allowed to say what cities you're in or sure yeah yeah we're working um orlando area is a big one um oklahoma city uh we've been working in um different areas of tennessee like memphis some just a lot of those different cities down south we're just starting to look at arkansas alabama south carolina yeah i i go up to orlando a couple times uh well more than a few times a year anyway i I train with a group of um people that that do iron man triathlons and oh cool and so we go on rides there and i'm you know you get you get just a little bit out of the city not that far and there's like new home developments there that are still under 200k for like a brand new home which yeah shocks, so that's what we do shocks me. we basically have a one hour radius <laughs> around orlando it's all the areas that service the villages in orlando and that's where we've bought a lot of our homes i've personally bought seven in there myself um but I mean, we're, but we, you know, we started buying them at like 160. They go for like two to 210, 220 now um, with the appreciation of the last few years. But um, I mean, these things rent for 14, 50, 1500 a month. It's in all day long. You're just crazy cash flow, awesome properties. Hey, that's a great thought. But let me get to this question that I just got from one of my followers uh, right to my phone. Uh, by the way, did you know you can text me at 703? 703- 2151684 this is a new thing i've rolled out i'm letting my listeners and uh, people that subscribe and follow me on social media connect with me directly to my phone on text message it's me answering them and, and responding you can ask me anything about real estate investing business whatever just text 703-215-1684 
and I will respond to you. Do you, do you guys follow, you know, there's that old uh, kind of 1% rule, which I, I think is needs to be updated for the cost of financing, but do you kind of adhere to that? Or... Um, I mean, you try to, but you, yeah. there's so many more things that go into it, right? Like, and what you're referring to, I believe, is for every hundred thousand dollars that you're putting down, you want to cash flow a hundred dollars a month, right? Is or uh, that you're putting, a thousand, cost. A thousand, a thousand, yeah. Yeah, so for every hundred thousand at the property cost, you want to have a thousand dollars coming in or whatever. And it's more so for us, it's um, I look at the cash flow of it, like because you know, if you're trying to do that, good luck. Um, so what I say is for every hundred thousand dollars that you were into the property, that the property cost, we want to cash flow at least a hundred bucks, typically two hundred bucks is kind of the way we look at it. Yeah, I, I think the rule kind of needs to be updated because it was probably made when interest rates were at six or seven percent. And it's a lot different when they're at like three. Yeah, ultimately, um, you know, we look at cash flow and that's the most important thing. Um, but then taking into everything else, our clients um, typically are either brand new investors or they're very wealthy investors that don't want to put a lot of time into this. And so uh, we just try to make it super simple on them. That's why we buy newer places, make sure they have good cash flow, make sure they're the type of properties that will attract a good renter stuff like that are you, are you guys doing this virtually or do you have people in all you know all of we the have areas teams or... in all those areas that we work okay. with real estate teams that have already existed in those areas property managers that already exist in those areas and then we just partner with them you know they take their commission we get a cut of it all that kind of stuff gotcha uh so so you've got property management set up what if what if you go the short-term rental rate airbnb vrbo you know those are those are I, th I think there's still a lot more growth in that area. More yeah, there's a lot of know, growth. You know, more people know about them now than a few years ago, but I still think there's there's some runway on that. Yeah, in Utah, you know, during the pandemic, <clears throat> um, people wanted to get outdoors. And there's a lot of really cool areas in Utah where you can go to. And so where people weren't going to Hawaii or Disneyland or whatever, they were going to St. George, Utah or Zion's National Park or Moab, you know. And so I started buying Airbnbs around those areas. They were having just crazy good cash flow years. You know, I mean, one property that you buy for 700,000 brought in $120,000 in rent last year, you know, from Jeez. Airbnb. So, um, you know, the numbers are really good on Airbnbs in Utah right now. So we're doing a lot of those properties they are harder to find now, but, um, we definitely have a niche on that as well. Do you guys set up the management for that or, or we have, have property managers yeah. that deal with them all? Yeah. Um, some people want to do it on their own, but typically, yeah, you pay 20 to 25% to a property manager to do all that for you. How do you, how do you figure if something will be better as a short-term rental or a long-term rental? Um, my rule of thumb is if there's not a track record already in place, then don't bank that you can short-term rental it. Um, only buy it if you just want to have a second home and you want to help pay for it along the way. Cause that way you really don't have any risk, um, you know, at that point. Gotcha. And track record, do you mean the, the actual home or just other people in the area successfully doing it? I would like, I try to get pretty specific. So if I'm buying yeah. an Airbnb in Utah, for example, in St. George, I want to know that exact neighborhood, uh, how they're performing, which is easy to tell because there's always some for sale and they do show those track records or, or you talk to the property manager and say, Hey, I'm thinking about buying one in here. Um, I would have you property manage it. What do the numbers look like? And they'll show you the rent rolls. And so you can kind of get a really good feel for what each one is doing, how it's performing. So you, you know, you're one of the, a lot of the people I talk to have been around 10 years or, or less. Uh, being that you've been in this uh, 16, 17 years, yeah, uh, you were you were an agent during 2008 when the crash happened. There's there's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, just just because prices are increasing, we're we're definitely headed for that again. Like, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun. I went to a, a buddy of ours is dying of cancer, and he's a realtor that we all started at the same time. So the other night we had a little dinner for him and it was really cool. There was like 20 of us that all started at the same time in 05, um, that time frame, And we all went through the crash. And if you survive that, you're an OG, like, you know, how to sell real estate, you are making a lot of money right now. And so it was just cool to talk to everybody. And I kind of forgot how difficult it was back then. It was so hard to sell even one house, you know? Um, but everything that happened back then is completely different than today. Like it, it, every single factor that, be, that made the market crash before, none of those really exist today. It doesn't mean it can't change. Um, like, so for example, in Utah, I looked at the affordability index the other day, we're the highest city, Salt Lake City is the highest city 
since they've been tracking this thing in 1985 of any city in the country. And so it's like, when you look at how much home people are paying versus what they should be, there's a problem there. There's definitely could be a correction, but then you also look at supply and demand and we could use 45,000 more units than exist in my city. So it's like, okay, ideally, you know, that wouldn't be the case. Um, but that's kind of what's pushing all this. So um, again, it goes back to the principles that I tell people don't overextend yourself. But at the same time, I truly believe that there's no way the market's going to crash like it did before. What caused it to crash the main thing before is people were putting nothing down. You could get a loan, an investor loan for 80, 20, and you didn't have any money. You didn't have any skin in the game. So when the market crashed, you just bailed on the property. But today, every investment property has been home, been sold. I mean, I've sold thousands of investors homes the last few years. Every single one of those, they had to put down at least 20%. So if the market does have a correction, it's not going to be more than 20%. And people just aren't, there's not gonna be this massive sell-off like there was before. So I am personally, am not scared. I'm super bullish. I think the market will taper out here within the next year or two. Um, it can't keep going like it is. But at the same time, I think it's going to go up more than it's going to come down afterwards from today's number. So like whatever the number is today, by the time it goes up and down, I think we'll still be above wherever we are today. Uh, that's my personal opinion, just because it's so different now than it was before. Yeah, I, I, I tend to have the same belief. I wasn't selling real estate back then, but I was buying it and uh, I went through it. And I, I think one... I remember back then, like it was so, so easy compared to now to get a loan, like even like the, the process, even I have to go through to, to get a loan with verification. And it's even tougher if you're a business owner, but um, completely different. So, so you're right. We don't have the, the strippers buying six homes, like in the movie, the big show. I literally like, um, that's like <laughs> we laugh about that, but my, my first office in 0506, we were next door to this accountant that did all the accounting for a bunch of escorts. And they were always buying homes through some of the realtors in my office. It was like, just like in the movie, like that movie, the big short really depicts what was going on. It was that crazy. I sold a house to a kid in high school. I don't know how he got the loan. I didn't ask. I don't know. Like it was nuts, man. Like people were buying homes, speculating everything. You didn't have to prove your income. You could literally just, they would make a phone call and you tell them how much money you make. And that was the verification process. So I was there. Like I saw how crazy it was. It really was the wild west. And it's just nothing like that today. And so you know, and before we had too many uh, houses and not enough people with money. Now it's the opposite. They're with all the money they've dumped into the system. And how, I mean, everybody I know has a ton of money right now. Like all the investors, you know, you're either, it's really divided, unfortunately, that the wealthier getting that much wealthier and the poor, poor. But so many people have money and need to stash it in places. And the best hedge against inflation is to buy a lot of real estate. And so I just don't see people selling their real estate. Where are you going to put it? Like, with all the new money that's been printed, you know, there's a lot of people that want to stash money in real estate right now. And that's going to hold real estate in a very secure place versus some other assets like the stock market, crypto, you know, precious metals, things like that. Yeah, it's, it's, they actually, I, I looked at a, just to echo one point, I looked at a graph the other day, like 2005, six, seven, we built more homes nationally than we needed. And every year since it's it's we've built less homes than we needed. And last year it was like 1.5 million to, to 2 million. You know, I yeah. Know. I heard it. I was talking to my, my real estate coach, a guy named Bill Pipes. He's Tom Ferry's right hand guy. He's one of my best friends. And me and him were talking the other day. He said, Jimmy, check this out. He said in the United States, there's like four to 6 million home sales a year. Okay. So uh, four to 6 million home sales a year. He said uh, there's 72 million millennials or 76 million, something like that. 70% of them in a poll want to own their own homes. That means if you only sell the number of homes that have been selling every year, it would take just the millennial like group that's trying to buy homes. It would, there's like six times more of them than homes available to buy per year. Like it's an insane number. And so when you just look at the actual numbers of people that want a home versus homes available, um, it made me feel very secure that we're going to you know, there's going to be a need for homes a lot more than we need people to buy the homes for several years to come. Yeah. And, and the builder, I mean, I think, I think the numbers are this year than last year because now, you know, the, the builders, you know, and I, and I develop condos in, in the DC market and it's, it's very hard to get supplies. A lot of the materials have gone up. Um, and, and some of them, you'd, you know, what used to take like three weeks might take three months now. So I, I think, I think the number is going to get, get worse in terms of like the undersupply. 
Yeah, and that just keeps driving prices up, right? Because you can't build anything new. I mean, people are going to keep building new homes too, so prices will just keep going up on that. So, yeah, I'm pretty bullish, man. I'm. I think it's. I think we got a good market, or a, an appreciating market. Call it good or bad, I guess, but an appreciating market for the next several years to come. Hey, hold that thought for a minute. Do you have a client that needs to buy or sell a home in the DMV area? Then why not trust the highest selling team in the DMV, the Carrie Scholl team? We've helped thousands of buyers and sellers and would love to help your clients. And we guarantee we will save them time, money, and stress throughout the process. And they will be so grateful that you referred them to us. Go to carryshoal.com to learn more. Again, that's carryshoal.com to learn more about sending us your clients that need to buy or sell a home in the DMV area. That's carryshoal.com. Yeah, what what are you most excited about now that maybe you weren't a year ago? Like, has anything kind of changed in your outlook? Um, you know, to like 12, 14 months ago to, to now. Um, I mean, a year ago was not a very good time. Everything was shutting down. I was just worried. I mean, I was really worried about the um, when you keep printing money and giving people money, but you're not creating more assets. So like there's not people working, building things and, and actually creating the supplies that are needed. Then you get this giant inflation. And, and, and unfortunately what it does is, so you dump all this money, $1,200 stimulus check, $1,400 stimulus check, doesn't matter what it is. All that money ends up pretty quickly ending back up into the hands of the people that already have money. And so unfortunately it's really creating this divide of like the rich and the poor. Um, and so I think that was a huge mistake that we see playing out now. We've seen the price of all these goods going up, gas, lumber, and that affects all the middle to lower class people the most. And so, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, that's bad news if you don't own real estate, if you don't own properties. Um, what makes me excited is the fact that I own over 20 properties myself. I have so many friends that I've been able to push into homes and investments. And basically everybody that's bought a home since 2009 has money and equity and, and appreciation. And so, so I'm excited just because so many more people are going to be put in a good position that, um, that trusted me, that bought real estate. Um, people that continue to buy real estate are going to continue to win, but I'd be, you know, more, I'd be pretty depressed if I was the younger generation. I'm, you know, in college right now thinking about buying my first home in Utah. I mean, you can get a piece of shit condos, $300,000, you know, and it's like, good luck. I don't, you know, so I don't know, man, I have kind of mixed feelings, but I'm at least excited that things seem to be opening back up. I heard that the national economy is back to 90% um, what it was. Um, I think they're, you know, finally we're getting rid of masks and all the fear mongering. And so I'm excited about that, I guess. I, I think, um, yeah, like the, the interesting thing is, is, you know, you talk about dumping money in the system and um, a, a lot of what happened in 2008 from both sides of, of, you know, Democrats and Republicans kind of, yeah. kind of happened again, like both sides kind of, you know, they, they, they all kind of say one thing and then and do another, but they all, they all dumped a bunch of money into it back then and kind of all did it now too. And I do think that's, that's leading to almost yeah, a stratified economy. Well, in, unfortunately, in it's like the Republicans, you know, when Trump was in office, like this isn't a political thing. Like they were a disaster as far as like they printed so much money, the worst that it had ever been. And now it's like they're pouring gasoline on a bad fire, you know? And so it's not either side, both sides are doing this or just kind of kicking the can down the, the field, but eventually it, it's going to catch up. Um, but, you know, I don't know what that all means. Uh, I just know that um, it's a really good time to be holding assets and, uh, sharpening your skills and whatever else. I mean, real estate isn't going anywhere. More people now are using an agent than ever before. Um, if you look at the stats, which is crazy, I would have thought. But when you think about it, like good luck trying to get a house that's worth anything right now if you don't have a great agent. You know, you're competing with the average house in my area gets 4.7 offers. It's never been more important to make sure you have a great agent. And so it's been fun for me. Like I have a client that he's from California moving to Utah because he wants to get out of that dumpster fire. And so he, uh, we have a lot of that right now, people moving to Utah and there was a house for sale for 1.3 million. And I knew, I happened to know the other realtor. I knew the, actually the owner, the owner of the home, it had like seven offers got bumped up to like 1.61 million, but we got it because the owner and the realtor agreed to tell me the price we needed to be at any other realtor. He doesn't get that house. He wanted to stop at 1.5. Um, and so it's never been more important to know, you know, like that your realtors dialed in that he has relationships with all the other agents in the area 
and that he really understands he or she understands what's going on in the market. Yeah, I think um, I, I, I think people have been saying since the '90s that you know agents are going to go the way of the travel agent, the stockbroker, then the Uber driver. But it, it's real estate's an inefficient market, and it's something that you do. You know, most people do it every five, six, seven years at most. It, would, it really requires an expert. You know, like if it's you high price. Up, yeah. yeah, if you screw up your car, <laughs> it's like all right, like whatever, I'll sell it. We'll lose five to ten grand, whatever. Like you screw up your house, your kids are being raised in the wrong neighborhood. You're Friggin' your house could have problems. Like it's just a nightmare, never ending. And so people, you know, they they want to have an agent, and I don't see that ever going away. I think the model will shift a little bit, you know, as technology and other things keep coming. But more people today hire a real estate agent than ever before, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that is that is cool. And you know, what, what, who knows what will happen with the the massive dollar printing that's going on? But you know real estate and this is something you can't say about other assets like it's 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 something everybody needs right you everybody. need a place to live you don't you don't need bars of gold um <laughs> but everyone needs a place to live so even even if there's tumultuous whatever <laughs> changes in the system like if, if you're if you own good real estate yeah you want to have a physical people need it. <laughs> asset right like if shit hits the fan you know, people are going to sell crypto, they're going to sell their, you know, and I have all these other investments too, but people, you know, when things get tough, the first thing to sell is the, those kinds of things. What they don't sell till they have to is their house. That's where their kids feel safe. That's where they get safety in their life. That's where they have, you know, a roof over their head and people will do whatever they have to, to hang on to their house. And so for me, real estate, you know, has become kind of the de facto, this is where I want to put a lot of my money just because it hedges against if there is any kind of, you know, economic downturn or anything coming up. And again, they're going to crank the lever till it breaks. That could be a year. That could be 20 years. Like, I don't know. I, you know, they're already doing it more than I thought we could. Like my whole life, I was told we can't do this, but here we are doing it. And so um, I don't know how much longer it goes for. It could honestly be the rest of our lifetimes. But in the meanwhile, it's always nice to be able to buy an asset that's going to appreciate that is hedged against, um, you know, and here's the question I always say to the investors. I say, if the market collapses tomorrow, will you be glad you own that house? And if the answer is yes, then buy the house. Like then you can afford it. Then it's got cash flow. Then you're fine. You can weather the storm if it does turn. If it doesn't, then don't buy it. That's, you know, that's kind of our rule of thumb. What, um, what do you do to generate leads just in your core market there in, in, in Utah? What are your, yeah, what are your so top Most top of my leads sources? at this point come through social media. So I have a really popular podcast called The Jimmy Rex Show, where I interview all the top people around town. Um, I've interviewed everybody from uh, the governor, John Huntsman, to Senator Mitt Romney, to the top athletes, the jazz players, um, all the top entrepreneurs and business guys here in Utah, a lot of influencers and stuff. I've had Grant Cardone on my podcast. So I've built this podcast that gives me a lot of uh, bandwidth to reach a lot of people. And then what I do is, you know, there's two ways to market in real estate. You can macro market, which means you're getting billboards and bus benches and you're farming out to neighborhoods and you're just trying to reach the masses. That's, you know, Zillow paying for leads and stuff like that. I don't do any of that. What I decided back in 2010 was to Mac, uh, instead just to focus on 500 people in my circle and spoil the crap out of them. So I have 500 people that I market to very heavily that I do a lot of events for that I do a lot of things to that follow me on social media. I follow them. So like, you know, last week I rented out the water park and had 1200 clients show up um, in three weeks from today. I'm doing a fireworks show the largest private fireworks show in the country. Um, so for the 4th of July or yeah, for the 4th of July. So it's four or 5,000 people will be there for that. We do it on the 1st of July every year. I partner with my local city. Um, you know, the month before that I did an Easter egg hunt where we had, um, you know, I had, uh, my buddy's helicopter. We dropped 10,000 eggs on all the kids. Um, <laughs> I rented out the comedy club, um, in two more months, I'm doing a black tie gala. Like I'm just doing stuff all the time and getting people. So I kind of have tried to make myself the most connected guy in town. And through that, I get a lot of real estate leads. And then I just share my life on social media. You know, I've been able to build a pretty good following on social media, my, my Instagram page specifically, and I just share what I'm doing. And so I get probably 60% of my leads. People hit me up on Instagram and, and just start working with them that way. Awesome. Well, it seems like you've got a great business plan locally. Great things you're offering investors. Before we wrap up here, I always like to end with the hyper fast round. If you're ready for some fast questions and answers. Let's do it, man. 
All right. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate agent? Uh, to keep pushing, you have to work harder than you think you do. When I started out, it was 70, 80 hours every single week. Like I was obsessed with being the best agent. Um, it's harder than you think it is, but eventually it gets really easy. What's something that you see experienced and successful real estate agents do often? That's, that's a mistake. Uh, the way they use social media, they're always <laughs> putting out their listings and, and begging for business. I just show my life. Like I just show how much fun I'm having, that I'm successful, that you can trust me, all those different things. And instead of trying to run to every person and show them that I'm the best, I just build a giant fire and let people come there to get warm. That's the best way I can explain it. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new investor, a new real estate investor? Um, don't work with a real estate agent that doesn't focus specifically with real estate investors. Ask him what his, port, his or her portfolio looks like. If they don't have a good portfolio, don't use them. Um, most agents don't actually invest very well in real estate. And so make sure you get somebody that's, that's excellent at investing. What's the uh, biggest challenge you've ever had in business and how did you overcome it or what did you learn from it? I think the biggest challenge is when you're growing, having to um, turn over a lot of the things that make you successful, right? Like being able to let go of parts of the business. I think for me, um, being able to rely upon my team and not have to be attached to each part of the transaction has been the key for letting me grow. What would we find you doing when you're not working on, on real estate or, or in your business? traveling or hanging out with my friends, man. I, I go, I go out of town probably three times a month. I just love it. I'm going to Ecuador this weekend. And, um, you know, last weekend I was down in Vegas and I just, I just love to travel. I love to see the world. And we live in a, a time 2021 where you can be just as efficient as a realtor, um, whether I'm sitting in Peru or Egypt or wherever in my hometown. So where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 10 years from now, I will be uh, doing a lot of the same stuff I'm doing today, but a lot more investing, um, just hanging out with my family, probably spending a lot of time with those people that I love, just like just exactly what I'm doing now. I, I'm, I'm living the life I, I always wanted to have. So, Awesome, Jimmy. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Before we sign off here, if people want to connect with you or learn more about what you do or see you on social media what are the, what are the best ways for them to do that yeah the best way to get a hold of me is through my instagram which again is mr jimmy rex um and i post i do a lot of events i do a lot of podcast training videos on youtube all that stuff i post everything through my stories on instagram so if you're following me there you'll get all the information of what i got going on awesome well thank you so much you've added a ton of value great lessons for real estate agents and investors and just people in general. So we really appreciate you being on the show. Dude, damn, appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you. All right. And to all of our listeners and viewers out there, thanks for tuning in. If you got value out of this, make sure you hit the share button so other people can learn. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests, improve our shows, and give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos.